What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today of course is the first day of our content advent calendar where we'll have a new video every day through to Christmas Eve. Now we've got tutorials, we've got closer looks at different bits of equipment, all kinds of stuff. If there's something you wanna see, make sure to pop it down in the comments because we'll do our best to get to all of your lovely suggestions. But today we're gonna to run through one tip that can help you improve your photography. One tip that can force you to become a better photographer. This is something that I have struggled with in the past because I get very comfortable with a certain set of lenses. For example, my 24 to 70 lens, which I've got in the front of my camera right now, I use that for probably 80% of all my photography work. And then I've got a 70 to 200 that is fine for most of the other bits. And that's pretty much it, but it doesn't push me outside of my comfort zone. It never forces me to try anything new. And I'll often just fall back on what makes me feel comfortable as a photographer. Now there's no real harm in that, right? Once you get to a certain point, I think that that is fine, but it is good to experiment a little bit and maybe push yourself outside of that comfort zone to try and improve your craft a little bit. And with that in mind, let's talk about that one tip that can really help you to do that. And that's forcing yourself to use one focal length for all of your photography for a set amount of time. So for example, a 50 millimeter prime lens, not taking that off your camera for a week, for two weeks, for a month, however long you want to make it last, it can force you to think about your photography in a different way. So for example, I do all kinds of different photography pretty much all the time. So landscape, portrait, food photography, product photography, whatever it might be, there's loads of different types that I'm doing, whether it's for the YouTube channel, whether it's taking headshots, whether it's other photography work. And using one focal length for all of that stuff is not particularly convenient, but it does force me to think about every shoot in a slightly different way. For instance, it's gonna force you to think more about composition and lighting because you can't rely on that zoom to kind of change the background, to change what's included or not included in the frame. It really forces you to move the camera, move yourself and get the correct composition that way. It makes you think about positioning and then lighting, where the camera might wanna be in relation to the light. And ultimately it makes you think about the story of the photo. So how close do you want to be to your subject? Where do you want the camera to be? How important is that particular element in the frame? If you had include that, are you gonna to have to include something else? What about the depth of field? How are you gonna affect that? Obviously you can change the aperture, but you could also move the camera closer or further away from the subject to affect that depth of field effect, to affect the bokeh in the background. You might have heard the phrase before that the best zoom lens is your feet. Actually physically getting closer to your subject is the best way to zoom in. Now, I don't actually necessarily agree with that. I think the best zoom lens is probably a zoom lens, but I do think that it's a great exercise to try this, to force yourself to not use a zoom lens, but instead to move yourself to get closer to your subject because it's gonna change the perspective. It's gonna change the composition of the photo and you're gonna have challenges that you're forced to overcome in a different way. Sometimes that can even mean finding new or different light, adding or removing light from the scene if you're able to do that as well, if you're fully in control of the lighting. And by forcing yourself to overcome these challenges that you've ended up putting on yourself, you're actually gonna become a better photographer. You can take everything you learn from that and apply it back to using zoom lenses later. I've always said on this channel that anytime you have to make a conscious choice in photography will almost always result in a better photo. Anytime that you're not just going through the motions, anytime you're actually deciding on a certain way to do something will always make you a better photographer. There's no wrong answers when it comes to photography and actually just making the choice is always better than just sort of going with whatever. Now 50 millimeters is probably the best prime lens to really start this exercise with. That's a great focal length to try this out because it's a great all rounder. It's not gonna be unreasonably challenging from the get go. 50 mm is great for landscape, portrait, street food product, pretty much all kinds of photography, except of course for telephoto stuff. And I'll give you a great example. I don't always love doing street photography with a wider lens. Now, 50 mil is not overly wide, but when I do street photography, I tend to do it with something like a 70 to 200, because it just lets me be further away. I don't have to get up in people's faces and I can get those candid shots without kind of being part of the crowd, without being right up there. But with the 50 millimeter lens, I don't have much choice. I have to get in a little bit closer. It pushes me a little bit outside of my comfort zone and actually makes me a better photographer. It forces me to be a bit more confident, to get in there and try and get those photos that I otherwise 
wouldn't get. I end up with a different set of photos from the type that I would normally take, and that's really good because now I've got a different skill set that I can apply in a different way later down the line. Of course, you don't have to use 50 mil, and maybe in fact you start with 50 mil, but you could move into 35 mil, 85 mil. They're all gonna give you a slightly different challenge to overcome. And it's a great way to learn some new stuff and apply that later down the line to all kinds of photography. Of course, there are advantages to using prime lenses like this. First of all, you generally have more options when it comes to what aperture to use. There'll usually be a faster aperture, even if it's f1.8. That means you've got more options when it comes to depth of field, when it comes to low light. You tend to have sharper photos as well. The image quality on a prime lens will tend to be a little bit better. And ultimately, like I say, making a conscious choice about how to take a photo will almost always end up with a better end result. So let me know down in the comments, have you ever tried this out? I'd love to know how it went for you, if this is something you ever practice regularly or you know once a year or something like that. I think it's something that I want to do more often. Maybe once a year for a couple of weeks, I will just use one prime lens. I will just stick with one focal length to just force myself you know, to get a little bit uncomfortable and actually become a better photographer at the end of it. But I'd love to know your experiences. Of course, there's links to all of the stuff used for this video and all of the photos down in the description, so you can go and check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video, because there's new stuff every day through to Christmas Eve. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.